Do I look like an asshole with these on? <laughs> I'm just gonna take them off. Libero toca la timba. What's up, you homies? It's your homegirl Natalie. <laughs> What's up, you homies? It's your homegirl Natalie, and today I'll be sharing with you my 30 styling tips that every person should know. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, number one is to find the right bra. Um, I don't know if you guys watched my June favorites that I did where I talked about wearing the right bra size and going to get properly fitted, like actually fitted, not Victoria's Secret fitted. It's gonna completely change how clothing item can actually look on you. They're gonna be up and where they're supposed to be, so clothes are gonna fit you a little bit differently. So yeah, definitely go get fitted. 100% recommend going to Nordstrom to get a fitting done. You should normally get a fitting every six months, they say. And I'm telling you, it is so freaking important to go and get fitted. Like once you find the right bra that actually fits you, you're gonna be like, oh my God. Life changing, absolutely. Number two is to know your body shape. Down below, I'll link some sites that will help you in figuring out what body shape that you are. It just helps you and understanding what type of clothing will really highlight your body. Once you know your body shape, you're like, okay, this isn't the body shape I have, then I definitely can't wear this because like, I'm gonna look some type of way. I really kinda just use this as a guideline. It's not like code. You don't gotta completely go by it. I feel like even me, the body type that I have, which is an inverted triangle, it states for my body shape, I shouldn't be wearing things that are too broad. But you know what, I go ahead and do it anyways because there are some things that I just like wearing because ain't nobody gonna tell me that I can't be wearing no ruffle top shirts because I love them, so you already know. It's just really like a guideline. If you have absolutely no clue on what to wear, what clothing items look good on you or anything like that, I think this is just a really good base of information to know. Once you got all of that down, then go ahead, experiment, do whatever you wanna do, you know what I'm saying? like. The world is your oyster. Okay. Number three. Fancy you. Na, 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 na. Right? Isn't that the thing? I really don't know that song. Okay. I only know it from a meme. Regardless of whatever type of body shape that you have, for me, the most important thing, this is my personal opinion, is to create shapes and to create balance. So if you are an inverted triangle, for me, what I would suggest is wearing something that's bigger on the bottom so it creates that balance. If you're bigger up top and smaller on the bottom, then I would suggest wearing something that's a little bit bigger, like a ruffled shirt or like an oversized blazer to compensate. If you're kind of like a rectangle, then I would wear something that kind of cinches at the waist so it kind of shapes your body or wear something that's smaller in the waist and flares out at the bottom because it just helps in creating some shape. I feel like a lot of women just like to have their waist highlighted. When I dress myself, I tend to try to find pieces that highlight my waist. But also, if you're not into that, that's totally fine too. This is just my personal opinion, just just what I think, so yeah. Okay, now we're gonna get into the actual styling styling, so let me get off this chair. Number four, if you have a dress that has a very plunging neckline, a tip that I like to do is put a crop top over it and then it looks A-O freaking gay. Super simple to do. It's definitely helped out a lot, made a lot of my dresses very work appropriate now. Number five. Maybe I should stop painting the numbers because it's gonna be a lot, right? Okay. So um, once again, if you have a dress that has a plunging neckline and I still wanna show a little bit of skin, so what I'll just do is I'll just tie the straps just a little bit and then I'll put over like a jacket and over throw a cardigan, anything that will kind of hide that and ain't nobody gonna see mm -hmm. the fact there was my speaker nobody's gonna see the fact that you actually have it tied so yeah there you go I learned this trick from a co-worker I used to work at a bank in high school yes that was me I was wearing something that had again the neckline was a little bit plunging and I think maybe a button had fallen off or whatever and she's like do you have a safety pin and I was like yeah I know you could like oh you just safety pin it no problem what she taught me was that when you're putting a safety pin don't put it through the fabric just go ahead and push the pin through the top fabric, not the fabric that you can actually see. So then when you put the safety pin through, you can't see the safety pin and everyone's like, oh my God, that is amazing. Maybe they're not. So this is a trick that my mom has taught me. So with a lot of my jeans, I found that a lot of them are a little bit loose on my waist. Now this is just a very like simple way of like tailoring. This is a desired result that we want. So the first step is to obviously try on the jeans and measure how much extra fabric you have. You're going to bunch it up right at the back and measure just by using your fingers. That's the system that my mom likes to use. She states that if your jeans are loose, it's normally by two fingers. 
Then you're going to make two darts right in the center of your jean pockets. So if your jeans are loose by two fingers, you'll be adding a finger on each side. I know that might sound a little bit confusing, but <laughs> just find the middle and fold it in. Now, when you put in the darts, use your finger to measure the width. Also, the dart can either go right to the waistband or all the way down to the pocket of your jeans or bottoms. Se agarra así y se lleva hasta acá. Un poquito es el medio y el otro comienza. Bueno, si se estira. El bolsillo, bolsillo, bolsillo. Y ahí se pone este la... Y listo. Es un dedo. Pero que se va a terminar así. Se va a quedar así. Para tratar de que esto se esté eh, justo para que no salga uno para abajo, otro para arriba, que tiene que estar así juntos. Ahora se procede al otro lado. Se agarra esto de mm. referencia y se va hasta esta esquina. Si no, también del bolsillo se va, se agarra que estén así todos juntos. Mm. ¿Qué dices? Puedes coser a mano, a máquina o con la nariz como tú quieras. <risa> So to completely finish this, you have two options. Option one is just to leave the fabric there. Now, I normally just leave it there unless it's like a crap ton of fabric. It's, it was like, you know, those jeans are like way too big. Then yeah, go ahead and cut it because you don't need the extra fabric. But I like to leave it there. Maybe some people might want to leave it there because they're like, I don't know if I'm going to like gain weight maybe <laughs> or anything. So yeah. Adding a belt to an outfit can really complete it and just add in that extra element. Whether it's jeans, it's gonna make it look a little bit more refined or like you added a little bit more attention and a little bit more detail to your outfit. If you're wearing a dress, let's say it's very shapeless, doesn't really have a defined waist. When you wear a belt, now you are defining your waist again so that doesn't get lost in the dress. When I'm adding in a belt and you know you have a lot of extra fabric, I just put it as tight as I want it to be, as, as comfortable as it can be being tight. What is English? So what I'll do is like, I'll just go ahead and move extra fabric to the back and I know some people might be like oh but then like the back is all like scrunched up you know what for me probably gonna be taking an Instagram picture so like I'm not gonna be taking a picture of my butt I'm gonna be taking a picture of the front side so ain't nobody gonna see the fact that the back of my butt looks ridiculous or what I'll do is I'll put a blazer on top or something that kind of covers that area. Tucking in your shirt is so important. There's a couple different ways. Uh, the French tuck, if you watch Queer Eye, tuck in one side. Normally it's my right side. That's my personal preference. Another one is where I'll just kind of like bunch it up or kind of like flip it in a little bit. Take everything and put it all the way to the back. Kind of like twist it, flip it into my shirt. Does that make sense? You're gonna see it anyways. And my third one is actually tucking in the shirt all the way into your jeans to your bottoms don't normally do this with like longer shirts because i know that's not gonna like come out right but yeah that's still another option you just go ahead and tuck in the whole thing and just try to smooth it out so you don't have bumps and lumps on your thighs mm. i mean on your hips this is something that i like to call the insta crop so freaking easy find your desired length where you want it to hit you and then you just flip it in and that's it your other option is to flip it inside your bra. So it's like what I do all the time. I make all my shirts into crop tops. And a lot of people always ask me like, how did you make this sweater into a crop top? I'm like, I just flipped it and that's it. <laughs> Super duper simple. Alright, starting off with your regular buttoned up shirt, I get the collar and place it right behind my neck. How low you want the neckline is up to you. I normally put it right before you can see mad cleavage. Here I'm leaving the shirt buttoned twice, but you can go ahead and button it up once. It depends on the look that you want. Now when you're flipping up the shirt to tie it, don't just grab the ends. It's important to take the whole button up and flip it or scrunch it up together and then tie it. And here's just a quick one button example. What I really love about this style is that it works on women who are flat chested to women with a large bust. So everyone's included. <laughs> and here's another example on a shorter button up. I am so dumb. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh my god. Safety shorts. Every girl should have safety shorts. I always wear my safety shorts underneath my dresses and skirts. It gives me extra security and also a big ol' fuck you to the perv who's trying to see my ass. show your best legs, go for a pair of shorts that at least have an inseam of 7 to 8 centimeters. After many years of hating how shorts made my legs look, I realized it was because the inseam was way too short, thus making the hemline hit me right at the thickest part of my thighs. And I didn't like how it looked, and it just made me feel uncomfortable of always having to constantly pull down my shorts. <laughs> you want your shorts and skirts to hit you right before you get to the really meaty part of your thigh. It definitely stylizes your body more, it makes you look a lot leaner, and also my ass, or lack thereof, isn't on display and of course if you're fine with showing off your legs to the max more power to you man this is just what i personally like adding colors i know this could be really intimidating to some people don't worry you're getting some advice from the best no i'm kidding but it is something that i am kind of known for but i know some people are like listen i'm not trying to look like a rainbow just vomited all over me and i understand that i understand that so my number one advice is if you're trying to add in color it's just add in in small doses you know if you have a pair of like yellow mules where you're like well, what the hell am i gonna wear this with just wear it with a regular shirt and jeans outfit you could totally make that happen if you have something a little bit more of a statement piece let's say like yellow pants or something you're like okay why did i buy this i thought this looked cute but i'm like i don't have anything that matches with this the easiest thing i can tell you is just make the rest of your outfit just one color so if you have yellow bottoms make your top and your shoes and everything else black or white it's an easy way to create an outfit so yeah <laughs> This is just a simple little tip when you need the extra pop to your look. The NYX Vivid Brights Liquid Eyeliners are my favorite color liners. They're affordable and high quality. Not sponsored by NYX, yeah. Um, so I like to add in a thin line of color right above my regular eyeliner. Trust me, I have a very steady and precise hand, okay? But the liner I was using was kind of drying out, so that's why it looks a little bit clumpy. I went over it with another color and it came out okay. On this side, here's how easy the application actually is, and also how steady my hand is too. <laughs> Never forget your earrings. Never forget to wear an earrings and Oops. earrings, earrings because it definitely 100% completes the look. Beforehand, I used to think it was just something that I added onto my outfit, but now I think of it as something that really 100% completes it. I don't leave the house without earrings. Actually, that's a lie. I've done that a couple times. But that's to work where I'm like, ain't nobody gonna see me. I ain't gotta be impressing nobody. I don't gotta be impressing myself during the weekday because I'm just trying to work. But on the weekend, you already know your girl always has some earrings on because, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we have a look. We have something to show to the world on the weekends. I don't know where I'm coming from right now. Where is all of this? Anyways, um, yeah, don't, don't forget your earrings. Don't forget them. If your outfit looks like it's missing something, add in a thin scarf. Now maybe you don't have an actual thin scarf, so just get like the thinnest star scarf 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 that you can and just fold it and then just wrap it around. Buy nude heels, mules, uh, something high, something low, just anything that goes to your skin tone. And it also just really helps in elongating your legs. I have these nude mules and I really like wearing them because although the heel isn't like super high, I feel like when I wear them, it still makes my legs look a little bit longer. I look a little bit taller. If you're on your second, fourth, or sixth day of not washing your hair and your hair is greasy as fuck, especially when you go to the gym and you don't wash your hair, it gets really nasty. Anyways, what I like to do is I like to do a very, 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 very No, I'm kidding. Anyways, <laughs> um, take advantage of that greasiness girl and just do a slick back braided ponytail look. Just do a regular three strand braid and tie a big scarf at the base. Option two is super simple. Just tie a bow at the bottom of your braid. Here I am trying to make a prettier bow, but I uh, kind of failed. <laughs> if your hair is greasy as fuck again, so I'll just curl my hair like normal and I'll just pop on a beret. And nobody can tell the fact that my hair is greasy as fuck unless they're like, hey, can I try on your hat? And I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> this is like the proest tip that I can give you, honestly. Greasy hair, pop on a beret, pop on a hat, and you'll be 
all that. Oh, all, all that. This is all that. My hair kind of looks like a mess, but kind of looks cute too. If you want to wear boxy or shapeless clothing and you don't want to look like a potato, unless that's your aesthetic for the day, no judgment here, man. Add in different elements to make it stylish. If you're on the bustier side and are trying to do this type of style, a little tip is to wear something with a slightly flared hem to balance out the top. If you're wearing a dress or skirt that kind of hits you at an awkward length or a little bit too long, definitely wear some heels. This might sound like a no-brainer, but I just thought I'd add this in. Yeah, wear some heels. If you had some nude heels or anything that shows off your feet more, it shows a little bit more skin, it kind of balances out the fact that it hits you at an awkward angle. All right, next thing, don't dismiss an outfit without the whole shebang, okay? Without your hair done, without your makeup done, without them shoes, because there has been so many times where I've like put an outfit together and then I look at myself and I'm like uh. That shit don't look right But then, you know, I do my hair, do my makeup And I'm like, oh So, don't dismiss an outfit before doing all of that Get out of your head Let yourself experiment Maybe it might not be you But maybe it turns out it is you You know, you gotta try out different styles You gotta experiment with things Just even in the comfort of your own home And if you feel like, oh wow, this is really cool Try it out, why not? And if anyone kind of gives you like What the hell are you wearing? You're like, clothes? <laughs> Ain't nobody got time to be bothered about what other people think. I'm just trying to live my life. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, get out of your head. It's clothes, enjoy, have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Choose different characters to wear. Sometimes when I'm making an outfit, I think, okay, who do I want to be? Who do I want to look like? What am I trying to express today? What is the feeling? What is the mood? And that really helps in creating my outfit. Not everything has to match. You don't have to have the same color, boots, shirt, pants, sweater, anything like that. I mean, like you can if you want to, but it's not necessary. You do different type of shades that could still be a monochromatic outfit, so. You definitely gotta wear things with confidence, but how the fuck do you do that? <laughs> so how I do that is that when I'm choosing things to wear, I'm picking things that make me feel cool, make me feel happy, and most importantly, make me feel confident. So I feel like you could wear like a head to toe, let's say like designer outfit, but if you don't have that confidence to carry it, I'm gonna tell you that outfit is gonna look janky. Even if you're wearing the most basic, very simple outfit, if you're wearing it with confidence and you know you're like, I know I look good, I know I look cool, it's, it's gonna elevate that look 100%, so. And even sometimes if you wanna wear like super outrageous things and people People are gonna look at you it's like you're gonna look at me either way and I really don't really care that much because I'm not gonna see you again and if I do see you again you're gonna remember me because you're like dang that girl was wearing some fly ass stuff kind of just take a very I don't care type of uh, attitude towards things because I'm gonna just keep doing me and if you don't like that then that's too bad that's too bad you know what I'm saying and my final tip is to go ahead and give yourself a big old smile before you leave the house. And I don't mean like a smile you do to check to see if there's anything in your teeth, but just like a genuine smile. It honestly makes me feel really great when I do that. Like even throughout my day, I'll just give myself a smile and I feel like it just helps me out mentally. So yes, man, look at yourself and be like, yes, girl, you slay all day and now sashay away, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Alright homie, so that was the end to this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Currently right now as I'm filming this, like I don't even know if I'm even going to use any of this footage because the sun basically kind of went down on me. Uh, um... <laughs> I hope this this uh, helped you. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe because you know join the the fam fam. Please make sure to click the little notification bell and put all notifications. Because if not, they ain't gonna tell YouTube ain't gonna tell you when when I put up a video. And it's like, boy, girl, come on, man. So anyways, yeah. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hope this video finds you safe. Have a great day, weekend, evening, afternoon, anything. Good luck on your tests, your finals, that big review that's coming up. Good luck. Um, yeah. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. If you could only see the mess that's here. My mom is still behind me. She's been cleaning.